What's going on guys? So today's video is gonna be a very interesting video. We're out here at the Coachman Brookstone and you probably recall from several weeks ago where I showed you all what the brake installation looks like on this fifth wheel and how disappointed I was in it. Well, the response to that was really profound. A lot of folks left comments and they really had ideas and suggestions on how it could have been done better. Today's video is interesting because we have Bill underneath. Bill is with Dexter. He is actually their national training manager. This is the guy that knows the system. He knows how it should be. He knows what it should look like. And he's under there today to get this set up the way it should have been set up originally. So we're going to have a really fun video today. And later we're going to talk to him and actually interview him on some of the differences uh, between the different types of brakes you can get on an RV from drum brakes to disc brakes and some of the choices you have in between. So hang tight. I'll be right back. So before Bill got under here today, we had a great conversation about the setup, how he's going to do it, what it's going to look like, his suggestions. But more importantly, we actually discussed some of the things that you should probably know about how Dexter brakes operate in terms of, you know, how you run your lines, where your lines can run, and what types of lines you should use in different areas. But right now, he's done a couple things. First of all, he peeled the sticker off of the axles for me, so I have kind of a hard copy of all of the specs of the axles, you know, in case future down the the road I need to find a component or replace a part I'll have that and I don't have to worry about trying to get it off of the axle because it's likely to be faded or hard to read in the future and regarding the sticker that he peeled off that information is actually stamped on the back side of the axle it's just one of those scenarios that if you're doing work on your RV and maybe you're not at your RV at that moment I have reference to that information on my phone because I took a picture of it and on the actual sticker itself but you can crawl under your RV at any time and you'll still have access to that serial number you'll still have the information you need it just makes it a lot more convenient not to have to crawl under your RV to get that information also, what he's doing right now is actually disassembling the whole system that was there so he can essentially have a fresh slate to start from. So he has all new lines, all the components. He's pulling all the old stuff off. You can see some of the components right over there near that, that center stabilizer foot that he removed. And he wants to essentially take everything out so he can start fresh and get a better overall idea of where he wants to place things and where things should go. And these are also things we talked about. The key behind this setup is just making it more reliable, cleaner, and less likely to get damaged during normal towing, right? There's always some scenario that could potentially happen. You could run over a tire that you know is laying in the middle of the road and it can damage something. But the way he's gonna be running it, the way he's gonna be putting it under here is going to at least position it in a way to where it's less likely to be affected by certain things that might happen in the road. Part of the installation here though is to understand what needs to happen, what should happen, and how he's planning on doing it. Because again, whenever you look at axles and you look at how hydraulic lines are ran, because of course if you have electric drum brakes, you're not gonna have hydraulic lines under there. When you have disc brakes, you do need to understand what you can do and what you can't do. And some of the things that we discussed are what you can do. Now, if you install this system so you are running hard line or soft lines underneath your RV body and you're running straight to the caliper, you would want to use flexible lines because you have to take into consideration the suspension travel at that point. But if you're running your hydraulic hard lines across the axle tubes themselves, well, then your axle tube and your caliper are static. They're not moving. They're not moving independently of each other. And that's where you can run the hard line directly to the caliper body. Now, one thing that was interesting that Bill told me about earlier is hard lines are always kind of preferred over flex lines where you can use them and where you should use them because they don't expand. And you don't have to worry about the pressure in the line causing the line to expand. So if they can use more hard lines to route underneath and then use flex lines where you have that movement, that suspension articulation, then that's where they're gonna use the flex lines. But it is perfectly fine on this setup to use hard lines all the way to the caliper, just keeping in mind that because this specific disc brake setup on my unit, this Dexter setup, does not have caliper bodies that move as the brakes wear, you can run it to the caliper body. If this had the Kodiak brake setup, 
system, the Kodiak brake system does have a caliper that actually squeezes in. And if you have a hard line ran to your caliper, there could be a little bit of movement there. And that's one of the reasons why you would want to use a flexible line going to the caliper from the axle body or if you're simply gonna be running your flexible lines from the undercarriage of the fifth wheel to the actual caliper. But that would be the same regardless of setup. The only flex lines on my unit that would be needed would be the ones coming from the bottom, the undercarriage of the fifth wheel itself to the actual axle and where it splits off. So that's essentially the only flex line that would be needed on each axle. Okay, so Bill just took off to run to the part store real quick to get a few things that he might need. So what the plan is, He's got the brake line, that's a temporary thing. It's just there temporarily while he kind of gets everything in place and he's not nearly done. But he is going to essentially run the brake line out on a, on a piece of uh, steel that he's gonna mount. So it's all kind of suspended in the middle instead of just going into that plastic backing. And then he's gonna drop the flex line down to split off here and then possibly run another flex line out to the back. Uh, he gave me the option, he said, you know what, let's figure out what we want to do, whether we want to run another hard line to a splitter in the back and drop the flex line down. So he uh, should be back here pretty soon and we'll continue the process. Okay, so what we're trying to figure out right now is Bill called me over because he's trying to figure out whether he wants to run an 18 or a 24 inch line from the undercarriage or the underside of the RV down to the axle and to the splitter. Now the, uh, the cable really, even if he used an 18 inch, should never overextend unless you totally had this axle just hanging here. So he's decided that the 24 inch would be the better route to go because perhaps you're changing a tire on the side of the road and you do need the tire to kind of hang down a little bit. You don't want to overextend the line. So he's come up with a creative way of running the line off the front and kind of essing it back, which is gonna allow it to have a little bit of tension on the line so it's not just freely bouncing around while at the same time giving it the flexibility it needs to extend with su suspension articulation. And you can see these really cool hangers he put up here. A lot better than just drilling into the belly of the RV, so that's cool. Well, what we are doing is, is we're making a, a shortening loop in this brake line because our choices of prefabricated brake lines for this exact configuration right here, we needed to bend a slight loop into this line to make the lengths of this rigid line come out properly. And also an expansion loop like that kind of helps uh, with some flexure in the system as well. Okay. So anyway, what we've done is we've uh, basically taken up the extra line length here uh, with making this loop. And I'll, I'll tweak the loop a little bit to get it exactly the way we want it. And then we'll secure this line going across the back of this axle tube. Yep. And if this was going into production, you would have all exact cuts, but because we're doing it out here, you, you don't want to have to modify any lines and you just want to be able to make it so it, it works and fits considering you're doing it out in the field, right? Exactly, because we, we uh, th there are ways to flare lines and, and do that, but, but from a production standpoint, uh, we, we don't do that. We would rather use an existing line and add an expansion loop in it as opposed to uh, reflaring one. All right, perfect, thank you. Well, we got Bill crawling back underneath here. First of all, I want to give him a big thank you for his service in the armed forces. He is a Air Force vet. How long were you in for? Uh, 10 years as a captain doing weapons development. Yep, so he was in for 10 years doing weapon stuff with the Air Force. That's the easiest way to say it, I think, without getting too technical. But he is a great guy. He's been getting under here, in and out, working, trying to make this thing right. So, you know, one of the questions that David actually from Coachman had presented him is what's the best way to maintain your brakes, whether it's a drum brake system or a disc brake system. And he had a really good quick explanation I wanted to get on camera while he's under there. So do you want to kind of explain what you were talking about in terms of why you need to inspect your drum brakes? Well, drum brakes, uh, Dexter's official recommendation is, is once a year, 12 months, 12,000 miles, to pull your brake drums, inspect your bearings, reset your bearing end plate, but part of why we are interested in the drum coming off is so that the mechanical parts of the electric brake can be inspe inspected uh, for magnet wear and most importantly the mechanism needs a little bit of lubrication with high temperature grease in the pivots and the brake adjusters and stuff like that. And if that's done on an annual basis, the brakes hold up really, really well. So that is the normal uh, maintenance required on drum brakes. Older traders that have manual brakes, the brake shoes have to be adjusted every 3,000 miles. Most newer traders have self-adjusting drum brakes that adjust themselves. 
but even the self-adjusting brakes still need the annual maintenance to lubricate the mechanism. Got it. And the way you can probably tell if that's not working is if you get those grabby brakes, right? Well, that's that's partly true. Definitely what will happen is if you've got manual adjust brakes, your stopping distances will slowly increase as your as the longer you don't adjust the brakes. And the, the deal is it can almost double your stopping distance. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you don't manual adjust your brakes. So that would be the first thing I'd try to figure out on a trailer when I bought it, particularly if it's used, is to make sure whether it's got manual adjust brakes or it has self-adjusting. Perfect. And manual adjusting is not that hard to do. You just have to do it. And right. a lot of people don't realize that. All right. And on disc brakes? On disc brakes, it's much more like a late model vehicle where you can just look at how your brake pads are wearing and you can look at the wear surfaces of your rotors and physically, you can almost just visually look and see how things are wearing. Now, Dexter's still going to say every 12 months, we'd like to see the bearings to be inspected, repacked, and the end play reset, but it's a much, much simpler job. And also, with disc brakes, you're able to physically see the wheel bearing seal on the inside, and if the seal's not leaking, then you know everything is good. Where with a drum brake, of course, it has to be disassembled for inspection. Got it. So that's the difference between the two types. I appreciate it. I almost feel like you being under an RV is kind of like your office because that was a really good explanation for being in a three foot tall working area. Yes, sir. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, so a real quick overview of what he's done. He's routed the brake line up here. Looks really good now. He's built some brackets coming off of the frame, sticking out to move it out from the frame. He's got a 24 inch flex hose going down to that and then it branches off to each side very cleanly ran and we're back here and he's doing the same okay so he's just about done he's going to add another hose clamp i think but i'm not sure he says it might not need it but let me scoot under here so i can kind of get a better idea what's going on okay so what he's doing now is he's removing these temporary zip ties that he had in place just to hold the line while he was running everything here and the reason you see the loop here is because without having exact cuts um, they don't actually like to flare lines if they don't have to so what they want to do is they're going to try to use a line that is already essentially pre-made for the size and just coil it up a little bit, which is completely fine. It's actually better to do that than to use a flexible line because the hard lines, of course, are, are less prone to flexing. Actually, there's probably no chance that they're going to flex or expand like you would see on a rubber hose. You really only need to use the rubber hoses whenever you're coming down off of the body itself to the axle. And he's done that on just this side right here and then the axle right in front. So this other line below it runs all the way to the other caliper. And if I'm getting any of this wrong, Bill, please let me know. Um, at this point, he's attaching a few more zip ties now to the center portion because, um, you know, it's actually perfectly fine to do that. And again, we made a point earlier in the video that zip ties are actually an approved method of securement if you want to secure your brake line because they're never going to be exposed to UV underneath an RV. And you know, they're not going to get fragile or brittle over time. And he's going to put enough on here to make sure that, you know, even if one were to fail for whatever reason, you have more. And they're a lot easier to service or maintain if you ever have to remove them. We're so putting them every 18 inches, kind of by the, you know, by ballpark here. But anyway, 18 to 24 inches okay. is, is uh, our recommendation for securing horizontal brake lines across an axle tube. Okay, now I know some people will ask, because I saw it in the comment, why wouldn't you run the brake lines to the top of the axle? Why are you running them in the back of the axle? Well, it, they, they tend to have the, the, the least damage, the opportunity for a flying debris to hit it. Oh, okay. If you ever look at a used axle, I can actually tell which side faced front by the wear marks in the paint from the flying debris. Yeah, and I guess if you hit like a big enough tree limb or a piece of broken rubber tire, if you did have them across the top, it's likely that could wrap around the axle and cause damage. So if it's on the back, you're right, it's less chance to get impacted or cause damage. Because you had the ability to, right? You could have routed them anywhere you wanted. Absolutely. So he's routing them the way that, that they recommend, which is across the back of the axle. And they are a little bit higher across the back of the axle as well very nice and you can see these stainless steel clamps that are in place right here as well and there's a rubber bushing that is actually over the brake line that protects the brake line from the actual stainless steel clamp now what you're seeing here isn't traditional some of this stuff is stuff that we talked about and i said can we do this and he goes yeah absolutely it's not going to hurt to do it but don't expect most rv manufacturers to do this level of detail they might make it look a little different it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong it just means that they're doing it to what 
Dexter approves, they're just not going maybe overboard or above and beyond. You guys know me. I'm all about redundancy. I'm all about, you know, making sure things are overbuilt. And I think that that's what we're doing here. Would you agree, Bill? Yes, absolutely. All right. So if you could come out to everybody and do your own install, is this how you would definitely recommend doing it, though? Like if, if somebody's doing this in the aftermarket on their own RV in their driveway? Well, obviously, um, you definitely want, we, we've got a, a cut sheet that's online mm -hmm. that recommends how to install brake lines on trailers. So if you, uh, um, I believe it's 059B1700, you can get that under Dexter Resources, particularly if you're going to do this work yourself. And the idea is, is if we say 18 to 24 inches, it's certainly fine to do shorter lengths than that. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing about the metal lines going to a caliper, that is perfectly fine with this four piston fixed caliper style that's on our heavy duty Dexter axles. We also make a floating piston style caliper, a Kodiak brand and UFP brand. Those all work great too, but a floating piston caliper moves outboard as the brake pads wear. So that one either needs to have a flexible hose run to it, which is our recommendation, or if there is a generous Z in the line that will allow the line to flex a little bit as the caliper moves, that will work, but we greatly would prefer a hose okay. on a floating piston caliper. And then the other thing too, some people might think, why isn't the flexible hose at the center of the axle as opposed to the edge? Does that matter? It really doesn't matter. And the one thing about running brake lines and hoses on a trailer is there is a mi just a multitude of possibilities. Uh, some manufacturers will actually run the brake line itself in a loop, in a U-shape, and they'll drop hoses down from the trailer frame to the calipers individually. That is perfectly fine as long as you've got clearance from your moving parts and the hoses have enough uh, slack in them for the suspension to travel all the way down to fully extended, like if you were to jack the trailer up, mm -hmm. to all the way compressed for like a, a 2.5G pot pothole. So uh, just running flex lines directly down to the caliper, some folks do that, that's fine. The reason we chose to run these down this left side of the trailer is because we like to be able to support. One thing about a flexible hose is one end of it generally needs to be fixed to something that's not going to move. So that's what this anchor bracket is right here. And so we made some small brackets to mount the anchor bracket to. So it was convenient to us because of the way this trailer is constructed to mount those on this left frame rail. It. It'd been perfectly fine to come down the right side of the trailer, or if there was some structure in the center of the trailer, to mount this anchor to, it's perfectly cool to come down the center. Okay, but this is perfectly fine the way we've done it. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I say we, you're the one under here doing all of it. But yes, sir. Absolutely. Outstanding. Well, I know we're just about done. We're going to wrap this up, and I think the next part is just to bleed the system, right? Yep, and, and we've got a way that we will power up the electric uh, brake pump. And uh, uh, we've got a bleeding bottle so we can capture the fluid. And the most important reason to use a bleeding bottle is you want to physically observe the bubbles coming out of the uh, bleeder screw to make sure that you have zero air bubbles. Got it. Most people stop bleeding long before they get all the bubbles out and they don't have quite as good of brakes as they could have. Perfect. All right. Well, that'll be the next step. I'll let you wrap up under here and uh, we'll move on to that. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, it got really dark on us. We're gonna wrap it up for today. And then tomorrow we're gonna come out here, bleed the system, do an overview of everything, get it all wrapped up so these fine gentlemen can head back to their home state and spend time with their family. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today. We'll talk to you again real soon.